Good morning, everyone. Today is Tuesday, March 19th, and today we'll cover the trades for Yield Max Funds, TSLY, CONY, and MSTY. So, first, uh, let's start with MSTY only because they're the only ones that actually had a trade yesterday. Um, and if you haven't noticed, crypto is kind of doing like a little sell off at the moment. So what, what happened with MSTY? So yesterday, again, March 18th, which was, you know, Monday, good old Monday, they did a buy call, a sell put that's adding to the synthetic 21 contracts, and then they sold a call expiring Friday, March 22nd. So let's take a look and see what that looks like on the spreadsheet. So for MSTY, they currently have two synthetic positions. Um, now, uh, this synthetic position is 950 strikes. So if you look at the MSTR price, it's around 1500. So since they have two synthetics, one is at 950, one is at 1700, they're typically going to add, you know, create a position to the closer strike. And obviously the closer strike would be the 1700. So the 950 was untouched yesterday. Um, so the only thing I updated was how much it cost if they closed the position. And as you can see, <clears throat> if they closed it as of yesterday, they would make $8.6 million, which is pretty damn good. Um, I mean, honestly, I don't know what they're waiting for at this point. But anyway, 1700 uh, synthetic. This is the one they added to this again. March 18th was yesterday. They added 21 contracts. The buy call um, cost them two a one per share. The sell put, they got a $411 credit. So they made money on this transaction simply because the strike was above the cost, you know, the current price of MSTR. So, all right. So anyway, as of the close yesterday, um, it would cost them 591,000 to close out that position. But again, this synthetic expires April 19th with it which is actually exactly a month away. And this synthetic expires March 28th. So, you know, we got some time for both of them. So we'll see how it goes. All right, so moving on to the March tab, let's see how they did price-wise yesterday. All right, so MSTR took a dump yesterday. MSTR went down 15.69%. One second. And MSTY went down 9.84%. So the question is, why did MSTY not go down as much as MSTR? And the answer is because of the puts, not the puts, the calls, the weekly calls. You know, selling a weekly call, that's a bearish position. So if the underlying goes down, that means they're winning. So obviously they're gonna capture some upside on the way down, which is good. And on top of that, they made money on premium because they had 21 contracts and they sold um, you know, with a 1785 strike. They got 47.19 per share for that. Uh, by the way, it's 18.78% out of the money. So you know they were going tight on Friday for the next week. Obviously, you'll see in a second, they made the right move. And now maybe they're thinking it, okay, and we're not gonna go as tight. So we'll see. All right, so cash and treasuries, what are we looking at? Uh, cash went down, treasuries went up. Obviously they just moved cash into treasuries because they wanna make more interest. But overall cash and treasuries went up 2.4 million, which shows you, <clears throat> you know, they're doing well, more people are buying into the fund. Outstanding shares is up to 825,000. You know, again, we're gonna, we're gonna hit the mill mark. Uh, total income for the weekly calls, 159000 which comes to $0.19 cents per share. The produced a daily income of $0.01 cent per day and a daily yield of 0.03%. Obviously not that good, but again, they weren't making money on the weekly calls in, early on, so they turned things around. Now, active tab. So they have most of their contracts, 167 contracts with a 1850 strike. That's 23.11% out of the money. Wow. So this was the one that was tight. As you know, it was like, what, three, four percent. It was really tight. And they were right. They made the right move. So MSTY fund manager, so far, so good, buddy. Um, and then they also added 21 contracts yesterday. We spoke of this 1785 strike. That's 18.78% out of the money. So they're up to 188 contracts, 
30-day IV is 159%. We got to love that, man. Got to love it. Uh, MSTR price is 1502 And the chart still looks pretty damn good. MSTY, it was up to 40 Now it's down to 3687 which is still pretty damn good if you bought it in the 20s. Um, I'm showing potential gains for this week. They could still gain $8.34, which would put them, you know, well above the $40 range. Um, and then I put a picture of the MSTY fund manager because this is him. You know, he's obviously a smart guy. So he's probably got glasses and the mustache and all. So uh, good job, Misty fund manager. Um, so what do we got here? We got we got the payment tab. Again, synthetic income so far, you know, what they made is a loss. You know, they took a loss of $2.5 million so far. And the short call income, you know, $159,000 uh, in income. Um, so obviously the synthetic, again, when they roll the 950, they're going to make money. So don't worry about the synthetic. But if we just look at the short call income, they're producing about 19 cents per share, but they still have some time until, you know, the payout. You know, their first payout is going to be probably really good unless crypto just absolutely tanks. But we'll see um, what do we got here. So I just highlighted the two positions right now. Uh, you know, they're doing pretty good, but it's still too early. So not much to talk about here except the net asset value, which is 30 million. And the NAV is 3702 and the trade price is 3687. So I guess we can call that a discount right there. So for those of you that play that play that way. All right. So what else? We got pre-market. Let's look at pre-market. Um, I actually pulled up a uh, Bitcoin to see how they're doing. I pulled up coin market cap, which I used to use back in the day when I was a crypto, uh, you know, all involved with crypto. So over the past day, they're down 7.24%. And it doesn't look like it's getting better anytime soon. If I pull up the seven day, they're down 12.2%. So maybe this is the correction. Who knows? It's impossible to slow down crypto lately. So we shall see. But anyway, let's pull up MSTR on MarketWatch and see how we're looking. I'm guessing we're red. Let's see. Yep. We are red. We are down 9.59% on pre-market, and the price is $1,359. So again, it's pre-market, but needless to say, it's probably going to be a, another red day in the crypto world. All right, so let's go to CONY. We'll keep it on the crypto uh, you know, discussion. They only have one synthetic. Their synthetic is 250 strike. Uh, currently, coin is below that. Coin is actually $239. Uh, again, since there was no trades, all I did was update how much it would cost to close out this synthetic position, um, which is a debit, you know, it cost them a loss of $14 million. Again, this expires March, no, uh, April 19th, so they got plenty of time to go. Let's take a look at the March tab. How did they do yesterday? Uh, they actually did not do comparably to you know to MSTR. They did pretty damn good. Coin was only down one point one three percent, and Coney was up 03 percent. So overall, pretty productive day. I mean, with these funds, when you play when you play the uh, the yield max game, to get a flat day with the volatility such as you know what Coin has, that is a win. It's not easy to stay flat with these stocks. Uh, cash and treasuries, cash is in the negative for whatever reason, you know, yesterday they had 7.8 million in cash. Now they're down. Now they're negative 39 million. So they took out cash, a lot of cash, and they moved it to treasuries. And, uh, well, you know, actually, no, they only moved it to treasuries. They didn't touch that money market thing, but overall cash and treasury, what treasuries went up 3.2 million, but whatever, they took way too much cash and put it in treasuries. I don't, I don't understand that move, but again, whatever. Uh, outstanding shares, they're at 13875000 Short call income is at a debit. So obviously, we're not going to get paid based on the short call income. So we'll uh, move on to the active tab. So these uh, these were also tight. You know, as you know, on Friday, we talked about the, uh, or Saturday, coins, coiny strikes for coin, and they were tight. They're looking a little, a little better, I'll say. So we have 15,320 contracts with a 257.50. Strike price, that's 7.46% out of the money. You know, 7% 7 is like a easy, you know, that's easy for coin to make in a day. But again, crypto is looking red. So it seems like the the fund managers of Coney and Misty are 
crypto nerds and they know what's going on. So good for them. We'll see what happens though. It's, it's early in the week, so let's not get our hopes up too much. 30-day IV, 88%. Again, that's high. So like I said, the buys and sells that come through this is insane. So for this uh, stock to stay flat, it's pretty damn good. Uh, coin price, 239.62. Again, an outstanding 30-day chart. Coney price, 26.11. We'll see where that heads today. Uh, potential capital gains for the week, 195. And Coney Fund Manager, very happy. Very, very happy. All right, payment so far, how are we looking? Synthetic income, 86 million. Short call debit, 11 million. Net income, 74.9 million. So if we take the overall total income, we're looking at 540 per share. But obviously, you know, we're not going to get paid that. But either, either way, it's still early anyway. So we'll see how this turns out. Um, again, it's too early to look at the how much it's going to cost us to close out the weekly call. Again, they only have one strike, one weekly call, one synthetic. Coney's a pretty easy fund to, map, to, to track lately. But anyway, Coney net asset value is $362 million. Their NAV is $26.12. And their trade price is $26.11. You got a penny discount here. Woohoo. All right, let's take a look at the pre-market. So crypto's down. MSTR is down. So I'm guessing coin will be down. Yep, coin is down 5.33% at the pre-market. It's at 226.84. So we'll see how the day goes. Last but not least, everybody's favorite fund, TSLY. Now, TSLY did not have a trade either yesterday. They have two synthetics, though. So if we look at the first, 175 synthetic, all I did was simply update how much it would cost to close out the position. And actually, Tesla went up yesterday. It went up a decent amount. I'll show you that in a second. But it's actually 173.88 as we speak. This strike is 175. So if we closed out our position, we would net some money. We would net $581,000. So that's pretty good. That's not bad at all. Now, the synthetic 170 will be even better. Again, this is, uh, you know, no trade, so nothing added. Oh, by the way, the synthetic 175 expires May 17th, as does the synthetic 170. And the synthetic 170 is worth $16.6 million because, again, Tesla is priced above 170. So it looks like we have turned the corner. You know, Tesla sell-off maybe taking a break for a little bit. Maybe people are buying in. They said, okay, let me get this dip. Tesla went up 6.3% yesterday. Tesla went up 3.95%. So as you can imagine, we did not capture all of the gains in just one day because we were capped right away. They were not. The Tesla fund manager was not ready for this. But before we look at the active tab, let's see cash and treasuries. Uh, cash went down. Treasuries went up. So they moved some cash into treasuries. But overall, we actually, you know, they went down 2.2 million, which means people probably sold out of the fund. Outstanding shares, 44675000 Total income from the calls, the weekly calls, $16.5 million. Total distribution, we're looking at $0.37. Cents. A daily income of $0.04 cents a day and daily yield of 0.24%, which is really good. This week, not so much. So far, if you look, okay, you know, one day and they blew through the strikes. Again, you play it tight. You look smart when you're right, but you look stupid when you're wrong. So again, we have four trading days left. Anything can happen. Tesla can go back down. Tesla can go up further. If Tesla continues to go up further, it's really going to suck because Tesla is capped, right? Tesla can really no longer take, you know, much appreciation, if any, uh, which sucks. But we'll see. We'll take a look at the pre-market in a second. But what do we have? We have 30,325 contracts with a 170 strike. That's 2.23% in the money now. And then we have 11,635 contracts with a 172.50 strike. That's 0.79% in the money. So both have been blown through. Tesla price is 173.88. 30-day IV in the 50s, pretty damn good, 52.05%. Tesla and Tesla 30-day chart is disgusting looking, but maybe it'll get better. Tesla price is 15.52. Total uh, capital appreciation, I'm showing zero, again, because we are capped. 
However, you know, um, as I have tracked these funds, they do seem to cap uh, capture just a little, so that it may go up a little if Tesla does go up. Tesla fund managers saying, damn, I didn't see that coming. So they're just kind of like almost about ready to cry. But again, they have four trading days left. Things could turn around for them. Um, again, earnings is next month, April 17th. Update on Curve. No update, really. Still 80 contracts with a 230 strike, and that's 32.28% out of the money, which means, guess what? They're going to capture all the upside, right? Because their price is 2007 now. So... Curve, you know, that's why people like Curve. But again, it's monthly. It's monthly. The yield ain't there. Uh, synthetic income, $171 million loss. We know this, and every time we hear this, it's, I'm sure it's painful. Short call income, $16.5 million income. So just using the short call income, we're looking at $0.37 cents per share, which it's not bad. Again, it's early in the month. we got time. Outstanding holdings. Um, again, too early to talk about how much it's going to cost to close out these positions, but let me just tell you, it's right, as of right now, it's going to cost us a lot more than we got. So, um, I know, uh, you know, Kamar, We The Kamars YouTube channel made a video and he was asking, um, why are we capped? So I'm here to answer, you know, why we are capped. So basically, um, you know, since we sell weekly calls, it, well, number one, if we did not sell weekly calls and we just had the synthetic, we would move exactly how Tesla moves, you know, plus or minus a few percent, you know, um, a few decimal points maybe, right? But since we sell weekly calls, if the stock price goes above the strike price of the weekly call, these weekly calls are going to continue to cost us more and more and more money. So if you see, we have this negative 19 million and this negative 5 million. Since these strikes were blown through, if Tesla continues to go up, these numbers will continue to rise, which brings down our net asset value. And yes, you know, we do have the calls right down below it, right? These are the these are the buy calls, the 170 and the 175. These make money. These are mimicking typically the movement of the underlying. However, they're now offset almost one-to-one -one with the weekly call because you know it's going to cost a lot of money to close them out. So as the buy call value goes up, when Tesla goes up, you know at the same time, the weekly calls cost more and more and more money. And as you see, that's a negative you know, in the, in the balance sheet here. So uh, you know, for the net asset value total. So hopefully that makes sense to Kamar if you're watching and his community. Uh, but yeah, that's why we are capped. So our net asset value is 694,000. Um, no, <laughs> 694 million. Our NAV is 1554 and our trade price is 1552. So we got a two cent discount. Woohoo. All right. Pre-market. How are we looking, baby? I want Tesla to be up because I want to sell some calls on my TSLL, but let's see. Here we go. Dun, 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 dun. Ah, damn it. I could have sworn it was green earlier. But anyway, uh, Tesla is down 1.23% in the pre-market. So we'll see how today goes. If it goes down, it's good for the weekly calls. So, you know, in reality, the Tesla fund manager and the Tesla holders, they just... They want Tesla to go down now for this week. Unfortunately, you know, you can't really root for Tesla. You know, if we look at the break evens, what do we got? The lowest break even is $171. So we're, we're, you know, we're well past that. So we want Tesla to go down to 171 for the week. But time will tell, you know, it's, uh, it's very early. We have four trading days. But anyway, that's all I got for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you did, please make sure to hit that like button. It always helps the channel. Um, that's all I ask, really. And obviously, if you have questions, concerns, comments, leave them down below. F two FYIs, uh, I have a Discord. Obviously, it's free to join. So it's, it's, uh, the link is on my YouTube channel. We have great discussions, crazy discussions, weird discussions. So if you're, if you're weird, crazy, and like investing, you're, you're, uh, you're a perfect fit. Uh, also, I'm going to try to do a live stream while sharing my screen today at lunchtime um, when I get my lunch at work. So I'll do an attempt at that today and we'll see how that goes. I'm going to use that StreamYard app. And if all goes well, 
I will look into making this a more consistent thing. Maybe do like a live stream every week, every two weeks, something like that. But we'll see how it goes. Um, and yeah, so tune in for that. That'll be like around 1130 or so. I hope you guys can join. I might turn on the Discord too if I, uh, if I can get it to work. So if you guys want to actually chat live, that'll, that'll be uh, available. Um, and by the way, as always... This is not financial advice. Clearly, I am not a financial advisor. I'm just a schlep on YouTube that you guys listen to uh, day in and day out. I don't know why, but you do. But either way, um, these, these videos are just for fun and entertainment. Of course, as I share my journey to retiring on dividends, which is hopefully, you know, within 10 years, right? That's the goal. Uh, time will tell, though. All right. But uh, but yeah, like I said, um, if you enjoyed it, please hit like and thank you all for watching and we will talk at noon. All right. Or no, 1130 a.m. Eastern time. Later.